I wish Green Day got more credit though in that argument. Really? You think they deserve more credit? I I do. I do because I think okay. I I think they're just sort of like people say, "Oh, that's the next thing in the happen after the pieces fell apart." I don't think it gets credit for so much of like that it yielded from that to be like I I don't think it just should just be the 90s never mind happen and we have the grunge decade. Like I just think that storyline needs to go for the we have the first part of the decade is set by Nirvana, the second part okay. is set by Green Day. One thing I've never really thought about is the effect that Nirvana may have had on Green Day. I've never been a big fan of Nirvana, uh, but I understand their importance in rock history. I Even to a certain degree, their importance in punk history. But, um, you know, even Green Day may have had, on, had some influence on Nirvana. Uh, Nevermind came out a little over two years before Dookie. And then in, in Utero came out in September of 93, like what, three or four months before Dookie came out. Yeah. So they were in full effect when when Dookie dropped, and then Kurt dies on April fifth of ninety four, which was just two months after that album came out. Mm-hmm. Um, the hard rock and punk rock world were shattered by his death. Nirvana was the closest thing the punk had to uh, like that, the closest thing to punk that corporate radio had back in the mid early nineties, mm-hmm. and um, Longview was exactly what was needed to kind of get the rock and roll world over the tragedy of losing Kurt Cobain. And it was a sound that was the complete opposite of most grunge bands. Cause all that stuff is basically like dark, sad. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like arena rock, but like down tuned, sad and dirty. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that this was a perfect coincidence that that song coming out um, that summer basket case comes out. And then that shift is complete, man. That grunge, was that bridge that got us so hair metal was big in the 80s and then uh you know grunge came out in the early 90s mid 90s nirvana's exploding kurt cobain passes away dookie's coming out and there's that bridge that i think nirvana you know bridged the gap between grunge and punk rock almost i don't know i just it was it was it kept they, coming up in conversation and I was they did like, Man, they crazy. did well so they're they're interrelated in a couple of ways in that okay what nirvana did like Nirvana didn't necessarily put punk rock on the radio, um, even though like right. they came they came up as a punk band themselves, but they had their own style that they that they had. Like they could they thought of themselves as being in a punk rock band. Like that was their sort That's of so crazy aim. to me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> That's and so it's wild. It, and it's funny, but it's again it was a fusion of things. Like Kurt Cobain said, I, I wanted to make a Black Flag album with some Black Sabbath, you know, like sounds on it, and that's you know that's that that's kind of a an accurate assessment there. But what they did is they made record companies believe in guitar music again. That is really what it is more than anything. It's that they, and it's not just them. Like they're the spark because they knocked the hair metal off the charts. That is the thing. They right. knocked hair metal and all that off. So they completely changed um, from what was going from that new wavy synth and that new wavy synthy right. stuff of the eighties. So then it's like, gear. yeah. yeah. So they, the so, so they, they, they replaced that and alternative. And then like the bands that were left standing from the eighties, it's like them, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, Megadeth, all this other stuff. Pantera gets really big. So it's it's a, it's them and a lot of this other guitar rock right behind them, but they're the main catalyst and they're the focus of the fashion and and all of that stuff. So then everyone yeah. just starts c- kind of getting signed. You know what I mean? Everyone is getting signed out of that. And so like the reason why major labels would have thought that this, this band that had a hit on Lookout Records could be like a major star, major thing is because that template had been set uh, by Green Day, but it hadn't really popped. Like the most successful kind of underground band at that point was probably Bad Religion on their Epitaph stuff. But they, yeah. you know, were a much older band and went way back. So they were they were still trying to sign people. And it's interesting because you talk about the the grunge thing, and there's a few things. So the other contender outside of uh, Reprise Warner to sign them was actually Geffen, the the label that had signed uh, Nirvana, <clears throat> and they were really that's crazy. And they were really seeing like a, a vision of like, hey, that this can be another band on the pantheon of of you know these '90s bands. And you know, Kurt's still alive at this point and it was actually kind of a turnoff to billy joe because he realized like wait a minute we're t- we're not like nirvana but we're going to be categorized a lot like him i'm always going to be second to to kurt and so why don't i go somewhere right. where i can be more of a, of a central focus so that was one of the things that that he sort of didn't he kind of rebuffed uh he rebuffed that and another thing is uh this album is big for the videos and the traction that it caught on mtv 
And there's an anecdote in the sellout book by Dan Ozzy, where one of the, I think one of the Green Day people, Rob Cavallo, or one of their, one of the promotion pr people said that uh, MTV was specifically right before this having meetings that they needed more colorful videos because all of the grunge videos, all those nineties videos are these like right. black and white uh, sort of drab scenes. And they were, they were getting like a little bit of a younger audience. That's kind of, you know, not that similar to like the person that's into like the Nickelodeon and stuff and the more colorful stuff. And here is green day. That is just kind of more color. That long view video is just shot in their literal apartment shot, you know, very much in color. And then the second video, um, is the one that's done specifically with the color rushed out. Uh, um, yeah. so it's like, it's flushed with color. And that, so that was one of the things that they did to contrast themselves. And again, there's that dark drab, everything's drab in the nineties. And if, and then like green oh, day yeah. is like fun. Green day is like exciting. These, again, these songs are kind of dark and stuff, but it just, it feels like more of a party than this sort of, uh, this drab kind of thing. Cause you said like the thing about grunge is again, it's a genre that I think is very unconnected. Like, Nirvana does not sound like Pearl Jam, but yet they're both part of the uh, considered part of the same genre. Well, it's I mean, they're from the same city. Well, look, look at look at grunge. You got Pearl Jam, you got Soundgarden, you got Alice Chains. Alice Nirvana. Chains. None of those like, bands. Sound yeah, the Alice same Chains like a like a kind of a just a metal band that doesn't have fast songs. Basically, yeah, they're a metal band that plays like ballads, but they're yeah, sad, happy and, ballads. And like I, I think of those drugs. bands. <laughs> Nirvana was the one and, and not to say like like Eddie Vedder and like Eddie Vedder's on Bad Religion albums early on. Those guys were very much they were all kind of into punk, but Nirvana was the yeah. band that had the most punkishness, I think, to it that popped through. So that genre got more branded as a punk infused genre because of them. But a lot of that stuff is really like you're saying, that's kind of that seventies rock, but just with a modern with like distorted guitars and kind of recorded it's more like bad company than it is like the right. Ramones. Um yeah, so I, I think I, that's why I think Green Day shores up all that stuff. Green Day is like the perfect first pop punk band in that way. Like they're they're the perfect amalgamation of all this past of punk. What, like I think Nirvana is more of a new sound. Not to say Green Day is unoriginal, but it's Green Day is more of bringing punk rock to the masses than what I never Nirvana really thought was. about it like that. Nirvana brought the Nirvana sound, which had a lot of punk influence in it, and right. an idea of of alternative. And that's why I like to use the term alternative. I think actually better fits them because it was more counter to the mainstream just generally, which is a, a very punk ethos. Uh, Dookie's not really counter to the mainstream. It's more how can counterculture be in the mainstream and and you know put it uh, put it forward. So it's it, there's some nuanced difference. It's very interesting. There, I mean, those are probably what two of the two most influential records maybe of the nineties in rock music right. you could argue is Dookie and Nevermind. Like those, well, those are the two albums that set the whole uh, decade up for e pretty much everything else that spawned off it. Right. Well, we, we've touched on the topic of the music videos before, but we've never really talked about anything else in reference to those types of things having similarities. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you listen to the music, it's sonically almost completely different, but if you turn the volume to zero, and you just look at it aesthetically, you may have some differences in like background or setting, but look at the way Green Day looked and then look at Nirvana in the mid 90s and tell me they didn't look almost identical, which is, I think, one of the reasons why people would get Green Day and call, call them not punk or whatever, because they weren't wearing like studded vests and patches. They just kind of wore like cargo pants and flannels and T-shirts like everybody else did mm -hmm. because it was almost like a amalgamation is a great word of like grunge punk skate culture all that stuff was wearing that it was all of mm -hmm. it everybody was wearing that and then like you had bands like sublime bringing california culture into it which is where you get like pennywise you know appearance you know what i'm saying yeah. so but i think that green day they looked like a grunge or alternative band more than they did a punk band and i think that that would cause some people to be like oh well they're this without even necessarily knowing hearing or anything they don't know them they don't hear them they just go oh poser or oh this or that and it's it's pretty wild man it's interesting it's, well it's funny because like and let's face it what green day needed to do what billy joel needed to do is just look himself and that was the gimmick that he needed because they like they they were much more of that sort in that way they're kind of more almost like in that boy band mold uh, so to speak, instead of instead of worrying about the snarl that they're going to produce or like the the size of the mohawk <clears> and stuff, the way they're going to get your attention because your girlfriend's going to be in the front row watching them right. uh, do their thing, and, <laughs> and they just sort of had that vibe to them. Like they talk about that too. Like they they were one of the first bands that was not like a riot girl band that all the women still came to see at Gilman Street. Like that that were you know just as a reliable draw. And it makes sense. Most of their songs are about kind of relationships and and stuff like right. that. Um, yeah, their lyrical so content is. Uh... They set them, very, yeah, very they, different. Very they set different themselves kind Nirvana. of apart versus like <laughs> Isocracy or Crimshine or some of those bands that are playing right. uh, around. Even like like we think of Rancid's very like reflective and stuff and introspective, but Operation Ivy 
is and it isn't like you got a song called Shrub Core on you know what I mean you're you're right. kind of uh they're more like fun and, and adolescent and like Green Day has the veneer of the fun adolescence but they're very quickly like sensitive music too once you peel back that yeah. that onion so they're they, 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 and again, they had a they had a mass appeal that an appeal that you can understand doesn't necessarily always resonate with like the core demographic like us. Like you could see how some of that stuff would right. kind of just be on its face a turnoff, you know? Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing to talk about though, because like I, I do think that they're I think without Nirvana, Green Day might not have done what they did. And I never really put those bands in even in the same room. Honestly, in my head, I don't think of mm. them as the same thing. But like. Uh, Dude, that that bridge had to be there. And, I and wish I wish Green Day got more credit though in that argument. Really? You think they deserve more credit? I I do I do because I think okay. I I think they're just sort of like people say, oh, that's the next thing that happened after the pieces fell apart. I don't think it gets credit for so much of like that it yielded from that to be like I I don't think it just should just be the nineties never mind happen and we have the grunge decade. Like I just think that storyline needs to go for the we have the first part of the decade is set by Nirvana, the second part okay. is set by Green Day. I just think it's I think it's more okay. of a co. Uh, now it's kind of hard because there's post grunge in the late nineties, which is you know obviously more yeah, influenced by the but Nirvana. Not- yeah, it wasn't but then, near as, as as like monumental or then, important or, or or substantial as. Green but Day. I will ca- I will counter you that and like the Warp Tour TRL co- core that came in the next decade was completely inspired by Green Day. So like, yeah. Th- th- to me though, they they just deserve kind of. I know Kirk's a more myth mythological kind of figure. Um, and well, and yeah, he always he, passing away. Yeah, though, he always that, will that, be. That but I think in a different. I think for importance, together. they they deserve. They don't. Nirvana happened first. Nirvana set the stage. Right. But, it's, but I do think they, they need to be discussed on very equal planks when you discuss 90s rock music. I think they, they well, need that's to be why talked I use about the term, very similar. That's why I use the term bridge. I think that, that there, there's, there was a big gap there, and I think that it would never have been filled without Nirvana. But I think that Green Day obviously did its own thing. I think Green Day and Nirvana are very different. I think they mm-hmm. spawned different, different uh, whatever copycat bands, and they have a different uh, – what's the word I'm looking for here? Like they're, they're – uh, the legend of those bands is very different. Uh, uh, you know, no, so yeah, they are. And I, I will say to tie back to stuff you and I talk about more often is the other two bands then that sort of fall off of that, that we always talk about is op Ivy and bad religion because they are, right. those are the connective tissue between the end of hardcore punk in like the eight, you know, the eighties sort of California punk that we were talking about for a yeah. couple of weeks, like circle jerks and all that it's bad religion right. and operation Ivy, which really that, that gets the sound going to help the Gilman thing for then green day to emerge out of that. So that, that is also that other part. That's the undergirding of, of that at the, at the bottom. I think that's, that's always important to note that there was still a, a path that green, they had to get there and i think very much the scene set up by operation ivy and the sound set up by bad religion really helped foster that as a template of, of where to go i i would agree with that wholeheartedly it's not often that we have a lot of things that we just flat out agree on yeah <laughs> jeez. um 